Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean. Today I want to talk to you about something that has been going in and out of especially .NET development, though I'm sure it's applied in other areas. That is this idea that the data store, and in our case that's going to be Entity Framework, and the actual code that queries that data store need to be separated in some fashion. Now in Entity Framework we have a context object and we're often told that we need a repository to sort of separate those concerns or to be, make it more testable and such. And I think those rules for have to have a repository sometimes get in the way. And so I wanted to talk about three different approaches that I've seen out in the field and why some of them work and some of them don't work. So we're going to walk through a lot of code. I'm not going to be writing a lot of code in this episode, but I think you'll get a sense of where I lie in this continuum. Let's get started. So I'm in Visual Studio. I have a little project called Repo or Not that you can certainly get from the Coding Shorts GitHub. And I'll have a link of that down on the show notes. And this is a pretty, what I would call typical, though not a very big project, right? This is certainly a demo project and real enterprise code or real user code is going to be more complex than this. So we're going to have to make some assumptions about applying some of these really simple ideas over to more complex domains. And its job really is to expose an API. And I have three APIs here, one to return some customers, one to return some orders, and one to return product APIs. And these, all three of these use different ideas about how to do data access. And so let's go ahead and open customers API. This is a typical MVC controller for an API, though this same idea I think applies to minimal APIs and other ways you might write APIs. It's not about how the API does things. It's about how it gets access to data. And the customer API is the simplest one. It includes a context to the store that is going to store information in the database and just allows this customer API to use it. And so that means our gets are pretty simple, right? We know what information we want. And the power of this is when we have different ways of getting at that data, we have direct access to that context. And so there's two things I think that are interesting here. This is certainly a faster way, so you don't have a lot of changing files as you go through, but it also sort of implies that this is going to be simple data access, often when there's not a lot of what I would call business logic, right? This is crafting the data query, getting it back, and this is certainly fine. There's nothing wrong with this approach. This approach becomes problematic, I think, when we start to see how big this stuff can apply, and then we then end up creating unreusable sorts of code and methods, or even shaping data, that end up being in a API class, or you probably end up creating your own controller base to do that. That's sort of at the line when I'm like, you need some intermediary. You don't want this to be responsible for all of that. I also think this is too simple for when you do have any decent business logic because just getting data like this, get the customers, include the orders and order items, order it by and return, that's super, super simple stuff, right? When you're trying to craft things like reports or things for you know dashboards or you're crafting a more complex sort of scenario that you can't really even describe inside of a link query, right? It may be that you're pulling from three different tables and then having to make subtotals and totals and you can't simply do that with a single query to some data store, right? As soon as I get into that, I want to go ahead and create a repository. And the way that repositories work in my world is they are responsible for the kinds of queries that you might need. So if we go ahead and look at our data folder, I have a store repository. And just so you don't think I'm not doing it, I do have an interface for that repository. Let me get rid of that nesting because that always bothers me. And here I have a couple pretty similar pieces here. You know, you might have information about how to do other CRUD operations, update, delete, create in here as well, but I'm taking a pretty simple model. And these right now are pretty simple, right? They're not doing a whole lot of things, but the benefit here is that I can mock up this repository to test the actual business logic because I can always create the data score context with like an in-memory provider or mock it or whatever you need to do in order to make that work. Repositories used to be super critical in testing scenarios because it was very hard to mock a DB context, and that's no longer true. 
creating a dummy a DB context or having a DB context that has a well-known set of data in an in-memory database, those are supported now and testing has become a lot easier. So going to a repository for testing alone, I don't think is as important. But the idea here is that you would have methods here that match the different use cases you have. So if you have 10 APIs, you might have six use cases in here that some of them may reuse, right? It's never a one-to-one, -one, but it's never a couple methods and then go about your business. And so the orders API just brings in the store repository. It doesn't care where this data comes from or what sort of class or what the context looks like. This is just bringing in that magic store repository interface so that it can do things. Like it still needs to often do some logic in here, but this logic isn't about the data access. It's more about what operations to do. So if no one supplied the product name and a query string in this example, then we would just go ahead and get all the orders. Otherwise, we will go get the orders that have that product name in them. And of course, we're doing the same sort of things here to return whether it was empty or whatever the case may be, because that is responsibility of the API, not of the store repository. So if we look at a repository and I ever see code smells like returning an I result or knowing about an I result or understanding its cohesion with the API, I know that you're not doing much better than just writing the code in the API. Again, I don't think this is necessary in all cases. When you're writing pure CRUD, this is less interesting, right? Because CRUD is very simple. You're going to have end up with repositories that have get, create, put, and delete. You're going to have those operations and writing a layer in order to absolve you of responsibility for those layers, I think is less helpful. But the more business logic you have in here that you have to test or that you don't necessarily want those developers to need to understand. Because the other thing a repository allows you to do is take those people in your company that have the knowledge of how to query the database or have the domain knowledge about how that data is represented and how we're going to represent it through an API. Repository becomes easy because then that just becomes the code that those people are responsible for and the people that are creating the APIs might be other people that are just like, I need to get orders and maybe filter them in a special way. I'll get orders and then do my own filtering and that sort of thing, right? So in small teams, this becomes less of an issue, but in large teams, it can become more of an issue. So this isn't a panacea. Like you look at examples of mine or even in my courses where I show you a repository, I think that is a pretty common use for a complex enterprise app, having one or more repositories based on different domains inside your project. What I think is important here is to not get caught up in the dogma of it all. This does not have to be, if you don't have a repository, you're doing it wrong, right? Because there's a third type here that I see a lot. And when people are, have been told they have to have a repository, they end up crafting something closer to a generic repository. What is a generic repository? This is a repository that you could inject whatever context you need, and then you can use generic objects to be able to do all the operations, right? Get, create, delete, update, and this can be generic to what you're doing, even checking the save as async. And if we look at the product API, we'll see that in fact. So here we're bringing in that generic repository, and this could be a generic repository of product too, right? We could have created in that way. Both of those are possible. And here, we're still including all that code for the domain logic in here, right? This generic repository doesn't do anything super special about it. It just allows you to not have to think about sort of the big picture. You have all these generic methods for doing these things against the database. And this I'm less enthralled by. The generic repository idea I get. And if there's something special you're doing here, not just interacting with some data store, or God forbid, you're gonna create a generic repository where you can switch out the database technology underneath the covers, that stuff never works. And this tends to be sort of a code smell that you're over engineering what you're trying to build. Because if your API is already has all the sort of data you're dealing with, has all the business logic of how do I order it? How do I get a list? How do I filter it? How do I include sub objects as well? Then you're not really benefiting any, right? What you're ending up here with is just a facade so that you can call the context without having to say that you don't have a repository. And while I'm sure that's not true universally, I see it a lot in my client work.
And so I think be aware of that. You may have a perfectly good reason for using something like a generic repository. So it's not a poison pill, but make sure you're actually getting benefit from having this often large set of code that is there just to make sure that the architect on the project who insists that you have a repository gets satisfied by that. You know, a lot of the problems with software end up being people problems, not technical problems. Your product at the end of the day is unique. If it wasn't unique and you could buy it off the shelf, you probably wouldn't be developing it, right? The company does something specific that that company excels at. That's why they're in that business. And so you as a developer are trying to make that happen. And so you have to consider what are the right things to do. And while doing things like separation concern and solid principles and all of that is good, I think you're going to see that the repository idea is a reflection of the fact that there is no right and wrong. There's better and worse. There's over-engineered and under-engineered. There's developing, you know, as a cowboy or as a too rigid engineer. Like, there are all these different things to take into account. But if you hear that this has to have X because it's not good if it doesn't have X, be suspicious. That's the people smell or the team smell that I often hear. It's like rigid architectural decisions that aren't based on requirements scare me to death. They should be scaring you too. Well, it's that time where I'm going to ask you to like and or subscribe. We can continue that conversation below the like button in the comments. I'll have a link to this repository in the pinned comment. And as a reminder, I do training and consulting. I do some remote training. I do some video-based training. And I do in-person training as well as I do take some clients on to handhold through architecture design as well as code reviews and that sort of thing. And you can see this all at sean.wildermuth.com. Go by and see all the different things I do. And uh, if you need somebody, I'm here. Thanks for joining me on today's Coding Short.